From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Well, thank you for joining me today. It is a very special day today. It's going to be really different today. Today we're going to talk about a scripture memory through music. You know, music uh, speaks to our brain in a very different way from any other form of uh, communication. Uh, music communicates to both sides of the brain at the same time. And uh, also, uh, the brain ties music to memory. So it's very uh, connected into our long-term memory uh, the, when we hear music. We all know songs that we could quote lyrics to right now. You could quote, oh, a Christmas song, uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Uh, you can uh, hymns, uh, Christian songs, pop songs. Billie Jean is not my lover. She's just a girl who says I'm the one, but the kid is not my son. Now, I don't want to know that, okay? But I've got that down cold because I've heard the song so many times. And there's something about music and memory and long-term memory that is it's the most effective tool as a matter of fact we know the soviets use uh, music to communicate propaganda to their children uh and so uh, we know in the old testament uh we have a in our bible we have a book of psalms well those are actually songs they had melodies and that's how people memorized Uh, The words was that they had melodies to go with it. There's something about a melody and lyrics connected that helps us with our long term memory. Now, I've already asked you how many songs you can memorize and how many songs you can, uh, you know, just right where you are, kind of just start rattling off. Uh, I would imagine there's probably a hundred. I would imagine you could easily come up with a hundred songs where you could quote, uh, uh, you know, lyrics to. Now I'm going to ask you another question. How many scriptures do you have memorized? Cricket, cricket, cricket. Uh, you, you've got John three sixteen probably. You've got Jesus wept probably. There might be one or two more, but uh, you, you know you've got m- way more songs memorized than you do scriptures. If you're you know kind of the average uh, church going American. Uh, I don't have hard science on this. This is just from my own experience. So, uh, uh, you know, you'll have to, uh, you know, come after me for for a a fact check there. But uh, maybe in your personal case, you listening to the show, uh, maybe that is true for you. Maybe you have more lyrics memorized than you have scripture. So uh, I wanted to uh, knowing that about memory and music, uh, I really wanted to put scripture to song. And today we're going to talk about scripture memory in song. Uh, and, and I've got, as many of you know, if you've listened to the show, many of you know that uh, I have a scripture memory record. I play uh, songs from it uh, on every show. I play a song or a snippet from each song uh, on every show. And I also am giving uh, it away for free it's a uh, full full album, and it's free for you if you go to rickaltizer.com. That's A-L-T-I-Z-E-R, Rick, R-I-C-K, altizer.com. And uh, just contact me, and you get a link to the full album. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about uh, how this album came about, and we're going to play songs from it. We're going to, uh, instead of getting little bits and pieces of the songs, you're going to get the full song. And so uh, I hope this is something that you enjoy. Uh, I'm going to enjoy this show. This is great because I, you know, started out doing music. I've kind of transitioned into film, but music is my first love. It's really what what uh, I wanted to do, but couldn't feed my family and had to find other things to do. <laughs> so here's the story about how this this record came about. I was in the middle of doing a, a kid's uh, worship uh, brand called Worship Jams. Uh, back in the mid uh, 2000, about 10 years ago, we had uh, commercials on Nickelodeon uh, while you're watching SpongeBob. Here came here came these worship jams commercials, kids raising their hands and worshiping the Lord. Uh, you know, during SpongeBob, people were calling up Nickelodeon and complaining, "Why are you proselytizing on your network?" 
And we did this completely an end run around the Christian uh, uh, entertainment industry, around the industry. And uh, we, we put that on uh, through a, a company that isn't really related to the Christian industry, got it on Nickelodeon. And sure enough, we were the number one selling uh, worship record in America. Uh, we were outselling Chris Tomlin, and you probably never even heard of us. But we did very, very well. And as a matter of fact, we did three volumes and a Christmas record. I did 108 Worship Jam songs. That's right. You heard me. 108. And so by the time I was halfway through that, I was just going crazy with kids worship. I was really, really beside myself. And so I had to do something to save myself. And I'd been wanting to to put together a uh, worship record uh, based on uh, s- scripture memory basically for myself to help me memorize uh, certain scriptures that I wanted to memorize. And so I uh, found a, a list of scriptures that I, that were important to me. That was my criteria. Just, you know, I need these in my life right now. I, I these are, are scriptures I need. I needed them in my marriage. I needed them to uh, navigate parenthood. I needed them uh, to navigate uh, my life uh, you know, not being a big rock star and, and, uh, having to navigate all that and, and, uh, trying to accept, uh, God's page and, uh, spending so much of my Christian life, uh, saying, here's my page, God bless it. And finally realizing that that never works. There's only one page and it's not mine and it's God's page. And he says, uh, there's no deals here. You get on my page and that's, that's how this works. So anyway, uh, that's a, a long roundabout way of getting into this. Uh, I, I needed this for myself. I needed it as, as so it, it was music that I made to give away. I didn't make this music to get a record deal. I didn't make this music to uh, try to um, get it in churches and have other people sing it. I, I made it uh, for myself. I made the music what I liked. I'm a big Beatle fan. I love the Beach Boys, so it kind of has those those kinds of uh, stylings. And uh, I just did it uh, total out of my heart of just the, what I loved. And I wanted to make it just the best music I could possibly make. I wanted to make the songs the most pop melody songs I could, could make so that they would just burn in your brain. So that if you listen to them seven or eight times, you had those scriptures memorized. And I've given uh, thousands of these away. I've had one guy who's bought, you know, a couple hundred of them and given them away to his friends. And uh, so uh, it got reviewed. They called it the Sergeant Pepper of Scripture Memory Records. So anyway, uh, so the first song I wrote uh, was uh, I, I just love from Psalm 103 verses 8 and also verses 11 through 12. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And again, that's Psalm 103, 8, 11, and 12. So that's the first song I wrote. I just love that scripture about how God... Uh, chooses he does something we he's so big you know it's not well how come he can't remember our sin is he small no it's because he's big he does something you and i can't do he can choose to forget uh now i can forgive someone think of you know one of the worst thing that ever happened to you you can forgive someone but it's going to be impossible for you to forget it but god does something we can't do he chooses to forget our sin. So this was the first song I wrote and uh, just had a great time doing it. And so I'm going to play it for you now. Here is, uh, and then I'm also including in the songs, I, you know, I, I wanted to include the scripture reference as well so that not only would you memorize the, the lyric, but the scripture reference that goes with it. A lot of scripture memory songs will just have the, the song, but they won't sing the reference Because it's not cool. It doesn't sound cool. Psalm 103, 8, 11, and 12. I mean, it just, that's not cool. And so people don't want to do that because they want to be cool. I didn't care about being cool. I was writing it for one purpose, and that was to help me memorize scriptures and to help you memorize scriptures. So uh, 
Here is uh, the first song I wrote, As Far As The East Is From The West, and see if you hear a little bit of Beatle influence in this song. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great. That was as far as East is from the West, and it's on my scripture memory record, uh, Pop Symphonies. And you can get this album by going to rickaltizer.com and uh, just contact me, and it is yours for free. I made this record to give away. Uh, The the next uh, scripture that really stuck out to me um, is Ephesians 4.29. I've got quite a bit of Ephesians 4 in here. Ephesians 4 is a pretty amazing chapter. Uh, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification, according to the need of the moment, that it might give grace to those who hear. Ephesians four twenty nine, and you know we've done a lot of uh, I've done a lot of thinking on what constitutes an unwholesome word. Uh, well, of course we know vulgar vulgarity. Um, do you speak vulgarity to your spouse? Do you do that? Um, 
But you know, there's other kinds of unwholesome words. There's uh, judgmental words and critical words and bitter. And you know, uh, uh, in 1 Corinthians 13, it says, love believes all things. Do you speak words that don't have belief or hope in them when you're speaking to uh, a child or a spouse or a, a friend? All kinds of unwholesome words. And that was really something that I really, uh, God really got my attention on. Being very careful with what I say, that the words that I want to speak are for edification. They're to build people up, not to tear them down. They're for the need of the moment. They're, uh, you know, it, it's, it's in the right timing. I'm saying at the right time. And it's so that it can be graceful, giving grace. God's grace is beyond what we can imagine. And uh, to give that grace to others with our words. So much in, the, in the, the word about our tongue and the power in the tongue and how important it is, especially in our marriages, how we speak to one another. It is so important. So uh, one of my favorite verses Ephesians 4.29, let no unwholesome word. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth. But only such a word as is good for edification. was let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth ephesians 4 29 that is from my scripture memory record that is yours for free if you go to rickaltizer.com contact me and you get the free record you can't do a scripture memory record uh, without first corinthians 13 now first corinthians 13 is a tough one to write it's tough it's a tough uh section to write a song to 
uh, how do you make a chorus out of it? Usually, you know, you have your verses and you want to have some kind of chorus. So I went ahead and took the chorus as love never fails. Uh, I, I just thought that was a, an underline uh, of, of, of the, the verse. I'm going to read you 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. You guys have heard this probably a hundred times. Uh, but I don't know if you could recite it all. But, but listen to this song eight times and you'll be able to recite it. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It is not rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not easily angered. Love never fails. And that's my chorus. Love keeps no record of wrongs, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. So I brought that in again. I repeated that. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will vanish away. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And I, I, I love, you know, love what this, so much in this verse, we could talk about how important it is that we believe, that we, that we trust, that we, have, that we hope. So many times we get negative. We can go negative on our spouse. And that's not loving. Uh, so many times we're, we're looking to the negative. Oh, you're going to do this. You're going to screw this up. You're going to, you don't care about me. You, you know, whatever. Uh, you always, you never, uh, that always and never, boy, those are, those are dangerous words to use, but love believes all things and it hopes all things. And, uh, you know, wow, we could just spend the whole time on this one verse in our marriages, we we need to really break this down and, and think about it. So hopefully the, the the melody and the 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 song again. If you get the scripture memory record, which is on my website for free, uh, you listen to this album uh, eight or nine times, you're going to have about a dozen scriptures memorized. So it's a pretty amazing way to do it. So here, without further ado, love never fails. Easily angered love 